making it back to stay in a town. I'm on the edge, I ain't coming down. There's one. First guy. Oh, shoot. That might be not a bad one. Hey, there we go. That first blue gill we definitely could have played. He would have made Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Fish. Oh, there we go. There's another one right there. Oh, there we go. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Let's see if I can pull him up. Oh, I hooked him. Oh, <laughs> hey. Oh, there's one. Play there we go. There's one. The there we go. And I can't go back to the past. Yeah, except now I'm moving. Put all in the music from what's going on guys welcome back to another video one thing i know or two things that i want to get out of the way before we start today um one i know i talk way too much so by not doing big camera intros i feel like i kind of get into the fishing a little bit faster um but there's just a lot you know that i want to catch y'all up on and make sure that y'all know about because i treat y'all like i think we're always like a you know family or at least like distant cousins that like i get to see once uh once or twice you know a year and we get to hang out and whatnot but like we're always cool we always kind of you know check up on each other and make sure each other are good so that's number one number two is i've noticed that the bites at some of the ponds have started to slow down i genuinely think that's 100 percent. people are starting to catch on all right it's fishing time like everybody needs to be out fishing beautiful thing great thing so if that's happening at your local body of water one thing that i think really really helps me and that could help you is downsizing so everything that i have here is a small small lure so i have small poppers i have a smaller chopo this is a chopo 90 normally they're a little bit bigger thicker and longer so smaller lure smaller frit size just smaller bait in general and then this right here it's a little ned rig that i just stuck in my finger <laughs> but downsizing your lures would always be one thing that i would tell you to make sure you try before you ride off any pond and you don't have to drop all the way down to like throwing a ned rig i feel that that's kind of you know giving in a little bit when you really want to see if there's a fish in the water but like just throwing smaller baits not throwing those big slobber knockers not trying to throw a big spinner bait not throwing a you know five inch weightless senko even though that's a great way to catch fish of all sizes sometimes just going small is a good way to catch big and small fish and just have a lot of fun while doing it if you're just trying to go out and catch a few like i'm doing this evening and just want to see you know where are the fish hanging out at this is a great way to do it with some smaller finesse style presentations some may call it micro fishing i call it easy but yeah so this is just a little ned head um I mean, you can get those anywhere. That's Walmart Academy. And then this is a little general. This is a lure that I really love, but it's one of those, like, if I find it in my bag, I'm like, oh, yes, I have those, but I'm never really, like, looking for them, if that makes sense. And it's one of those, it's like one of those game time lures. You know, if I was fishing a kayak tournament, I was on a creek, and I just needed, like, one extra fish, just wanted to catch something to have a limit, I'm pulling out this. But the cool thing about a Ned Rig is i haven't personally done it but i've heard stories of people like man i was skunked all day put out a ned rig and boom hooked up and i just genuinely think like a lot of people skip over this style of presentation especially early we're early right now for a ned rig when i think of a ned rig normally that's a little bit like later into the summer but we're just gonna try it right here and see these type of lures really really do good later into the summer when i say later i mean like when it's you know 100 degrees during the day and the fish are just super lethargic Throwing something small like this almost always gets bit. I don't know if there's anything down here. I just want to see. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh, there's actually a bluegill down. Look at that huge bluegill, dude. Well, that's fun. That is a huge bluegill. Like that is a slab, dog. Jeez, Louise. Well, that's why we throw a Ned Rig. Hey. Golly, this thing is huge. Whoa, that is a huge, that is a huge bluegill. That's a great way to start the video. Yeah. Dude, that thing was massive. If there's a bluegill that big in here, like, okay, this is such a weird place because I really wasn't expecting to catch anything. Anywhere with moving water is always just like a must try spot for me. And I 100% guarantee you we would have never caught that fish on anything else other than a Ned Rig. That is, that is crazy. And the crazy thing is there's probably more down there. And like if there's bluegill that size down there, just imagine the, oh, there's another one. Oh, I had one. We had another one. If there's bluegill that size down there, imagine what the bass look like down there. Oh, there was another bite. I'm not sure if it's bluegill or what it is, but that was definitely a bite number two right there. 
There we go. Oh, I saw him. I saw him. I think that might have been a bath. This pool is so small. Like, this pool's literally, I mean, that's probably 20, 30 feet over there to the other side. They're 30 to 40 feet. Look, there's another one. Oh, that's a bluegill for sure. Those little, whenever you feel like fast taps like that, those are definitely bluegill. Yeah, that's a little bluegill. Let's see. See if I can pull them up. Oh, I hooked them. Oh, hey. What? That is crazy. I would have never expected there to actually be fish in this little thing right here. And they're not bad either. That's the crazy thing. They're chunky. What's that? Uh, can somebody help me identify this? It's not a rock bass. I don't think. Is it a rock bass? I don't think it is. It might be though. It kind of has a big mouth like it might be. I don't know. All right, well, I guess this might just turn into like a straight up micro fishing video. <laughs> uh, we definitely want to try to catch bass. Those are always the target species, but like a pound bluegill, I will never be mad at that ever. Look, there's another one right there already. He has it, he's swimming with it. That's a bass. Oh, there's another one. Okay, what is going on here? That one choked it. Dude, we just went three for three right here in this little hole. Well, yeah, that's what I was, that, they're proving the point I was trying to make. Like sometimes if fishing's just really tough and you just need to catch something, a Ned rig is your best bet. You know, just to affirm that you are still a fisherman, that you can still catch fish. Hey, you chill. All right, there's another one. This one has some teeth on him. Like that one's pretty toothy. All right, let's see if there's a bass in here. We're gonna get a couple more casts. And then if not, we're gonna move spots because we don't want to, you know, I don't want to load up a video full of these, but man, I was not expecting a pound bluegill to start off today's video, but oh, there's one. Yeah, let it go. Oh, our lure, our line trapped around our hook. I was definitely not expecting a pound bluegill to start off today's video, but like, since it did, welcome. <laughs> Normally that's not how we like to fish or like, we don't normally like to throw Ned rigs on the channel just because I went through a little period. I've said this before, but I went through a little period where it's like everywhere that I was fishing was super, super fished out. So that was literally, this was literally the only way that I could catch a fish was like on a Ned rig. This should be a good little spot because we got two places of water draining in, like right there and right there. So they should be kind of all out in here if there's any fish in this one. It'd be cool to catch a bass out of one of these, like, because the size of that bluegill, there could be like a three or four pound bass in here. How are y'all? You catching them? Yeah, I've, dude, I've caught three little bluegill out of this bro, one. Bro, I caught like a, bro, our buddy caught them in a bass bro, they put them in the tank and everything. Really? He caught a tank. What, do you like dude. donate the bass bro? Yeah, and they, they gave him a free mount. <laughs> I got you. I'll send it to you. Let's go. Awesome. But good luck to y'all. Well, we pulled up and hooked up on three real quick. Can't ever be mad at that. Not ever a bad thing when you're catching fish. So there's like another little pond out here. We're doing a little bit of exploring right now. I'm trying to find it, but it is not this way. <laughs> this is a whole different other way. Here it is. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm saying um, let's see, like we have something else tied on. All we have is this net rig. Looks a little, a little nasty from up here. But we'll see. There's only one way to find out. I have no clue if there's fish in it, but it does look good because there's like ripples and whatnot going on. So I think that should be a good sign. Good positive sign of life. So literally all I brought today was these Ned rigs. I have a few fruit sides in a box and then I think that's it. That's yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Then I have that chopper, of course. That'll be a little bit later in the evening. Since time changed, it has me all messed up because it's 630. I'm still messed up from it. Like it's 630 right now, and I mean I still have like an hour and a half to be out here and fish, so. It's just kind of a weird thing. Like you get used to fishing in the winter time and then by the time I finally get used to summertime, 
then it'll be back like getting dark early. I think we're just gonna hit the little drains in here and then we're gonna bounce around or bounce out of here. And try this little spot right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know what there is in this pond, but I feel like it's not fish. It's almost like it's like tadpoles or something. I feel like on this little Ned rig, as many fish that we spooked, 100% should've got a bite. Oh, there was a little something. Yeah, this is kind of weird. Come on, we're still on the hunt for our first bass. I proved my point about Ned Riggs being able just to catch anything and everything. A few little surprise catches. Hey, I see some light spots up there. There might be a few on bed. I like how that looks. It looks like a little sand patch right there. That's always a good sign. It's never a bad thing whenever you see a sand patch in a pond in like early March, because you know there's probably gonna be some bass over by it. Let me get a cast over there from right here. Now, if I cast over here and do not, well, that was a horrible cast, but I'm gonna make a couple casts at it. If I don't catch anything off of these couple casts, I am leaving. And I won't feel bad about leaving either. There's nothing over there. I remember this bird up here that's staring into the water might know something. definitely looking at something because he's been standing there the whole time I've been over here. not what you want oh when not dang that sucks how does that even happen leave it to me to backlash the spinning reel <laughs> honestly oh there we go got it out all right aha left the sunglasses at home that's for sure it's a bright one today and we're i feel like when we're in the money spot we're gonna know because we're gonna start catching fish <laughs> oh that rocket looks so good look at it look at it just sitting there Looks like Lightning McQueen to me. That's the most Lightning McQueen S thing I've seen today. That little fritz out over here a little bit. Since the wind's blowing over here too, I'm gonna this is be... you know, This is probably a pretty decent spot to start. Got the little bluegill imitation fritz out right here. There's one. First cast. Oh shoot, that might be not a bad one. Hey, there we go. First cast on the bluegill. On the bluegill for its side. Hey. Boom. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Not first cast at least. I was definitely expecting to catch one. That's not a bad one either. That's a solid fish. It's a step up from what we've been doing on the channel. I'll tell you that much. Boom, baby, look at that. That is not a dink compared to the ones that we've been catching. You got a good mouth on them. Hey, you chill out, dude. You are mean, I'm gonna put you back. Hey, let's go. First bass is not a bad one on the little fritz side. This is a little bluegill pattern right here. After catching that bluegill that we caught to start off the day, my mind straight went to that or the chopo because one of the chopos that we have in our bag is like a little bluegill pattern too. See, maybe we can double up right here. I really don't like that cast because I feel like I'm a little bit too close to the bank and I might get hung up. And I thought that fish was going to be a little bit bigger than he was because he really wasn't coming up. Also, I hooked him right here at the bank, so I'm not sure if that means like, that he followed it in or he came up and ate it at the bank or he was already up close to the bank. Let's see if we can get on another one. That was cool. I mean, shoot, first cast with it too. Right at the bank. I mean, just using context clues. I was gonna go back around and try to fish another pond, but I mean, the wind is blowing over here. Um, 
So just got everything that you want, like wind blowing over here. I've seen a few little like bug hatches or whatnot. So that means probably gonna be some bluegill over here or smaller fish that are gonna be eating those bugs, also bass. And then those smaller fish are going to attract the bass. And that's why we're throwing something that perfectly imitates a bluegill. Cause I mean, it really doesn't get too much closer than this right here. Like that's, shoot, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference in the water, especially if I was hungry. Dude, if I was just hungry and saw it on somebody's table, I'd probably try to kill it and fillet it. <laughs> My first bluegill, we definitely could have filleted. He would make. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. That one's kind of big a little bit. Hey, that's not as big as the first one, but he was a fighter for sure. I don't know if the videos came out yet, but I caught one on a spinnerbait out here. He was literally half the size of this one. Swore it was like at least a four or five pounder. The way, I mean by the head, when I started reeling, of course I kind of knew. Like first words were definitely, oh, big one. Like, like somebody come land them for me. Boom, baby, let's go. There's another one. It's fish number two off the dam. See it? Man, I'll tell you, there's nothing like catching a fish on a spinning rod. Like I think spinning rods might be one of my favorite ways to catch a fish. I'm just not as, I'm good with them, but like I just prefer a bait caster, but like, I don't want to say it's my favorite way, but there's nothing wrong with a good spinning rod day, in my opinion. And then we got a good fast reel, and it's probably about the same speed as a bait caster. I'm trying to think what speed is this. I know it's definitely over like a six or seven. I want to say it's an eight, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to look it up. I'll pop it up on the screen. But we got a faster speed reel, so I think we can get away with moving our lure a little bit faster today. Normally, when I'm cranking, I'd want like a six to four to one or a five to four to one really as slow as i can possibly get because i just tend to move fast so really that slow reel i can still feel like i'm reeling really fast even though i'm not that is not what you want to do you do not want to cast parallel to the bank but your lure go on the bank you want it to go in the water most of the time that's the target when you're bass fishing you want your 10 times out of 10 you prefer if your lure went into the water and not you know, up on the bank i mean we're already at two fish can't be mad at that two bass at least we got five on the day so i need y'all to drop in the comments and let me know what type of fish oh there we go there's another one right there not a crazy big one but we will take it number three we might have it figured out don't want to call anything but it's feeling pretty good because we haven't had this thing tied on but for maybe five minutes look let's see if we can get on a big one that first one we caught was pretty good hey not a bad one we're sizing no, we're staying pretty consistent. Leaving room for improvement. Awesome, awesome. Definitely think that if we do catch a bigger one, it's worth kind of making cast out into the lake because I feel like that's where the bigger one is probably going to come from. Is that a fish? No, that is not a fish. That is grass. Grass is not fish. Fish is not grass. Two different things. Alright. I feel like we're out here at the perfect time for this bite. Like this is probably a, you know, we'll catch them like this for maybe hopefully the next like 20, 30 minutes. And then after that we will hopefully tie on a chopo and be able to catch a few on top water. Another thing, if you want to throw small baits, little tip for you, definitely get you a good spinning rod, spinning rod combo. Um as far as real speed, me personally, I would want something in like the five to sixes just something that you can do everything on you can throw a moving bait on you can fish a ned rig you don't want anything too too fast whenever you're trying to fish a ned rig but it's all personal preference at the end of the day like me personally it is nice to be able to pick up your slack pretty fast but at the same time i just tend to be touching the handle like it's one of those subconscious things that i need to personally work on but you know if i'm just out fishing like i'm just always you know fumbling with something so i want a little bit slower of a reel um but it's all personal preference and i know you know, it's kind of one of those things i know how it is like only having enough money to buy one or two combos not saying i have a whole bunch of money now to buy whatever i want but you know what i mean but if i had to tell you like if you're just taking my word for it i'll tell you to find something nothing higher than a seven one to one you don't need a rocket 100 percent don't need a rocket but i really like that sx that we caught those first couple of fish on if you're looking for something dependable like something that you can take out on the buddy's boat and you know you feel like you look the part on the water or you can take out to a pond and it's not like why am i fishing this 200 dollars reel in a pond you know it's just a good good combo good reel but for fishing smaller baits like this definitely definitely want to throw them on a spinner rod you can get away with throwing this front side right here on a bait caster but as far as distance you're going to get some better distance out of 
Ned rigs and small frit size and just smaller lures in general on your spinning setup. And then also straight up, spinning setups are just fun to fish with. Like catching a fish and hearing your drag scream instead of just kind of like a click and drag. It's just, it's totally, it's a totally different feeling. Like hooking a five, six, seven, eight, nine pound bass on a spinning rod is just exhilarating. Just hearing that sound, that drag strip is just <laughs> such a good feeling. And this thing's clutch. These frit size, I'm telling you like, I do throw them a lot, but I mean, they're one of those lures, like people really kind of, I feel like they're promoted as like a fall lure or, you know, kind of like a transition season lure, but it's really something that you can throw year round. And I would tell you to get this pattern right here, get you a red one, get you a chartreuse one and get you one that looks like a shad. There we go. Hey, sorry, sorry, banged you up against the rocks. Hey, red lips. Hey, nope, you are not going back in the water. I gotta talk to you first. Stop it. Stop it. You're gonna knock yourself out. Boom. All right. Now you can go back. <laughs> cool. Makes number four. A little frit side. We're gonna try to get a couple on top water though this evening. I wanna go fish kind of where we started at with that Ned rig a little bit more because there's one more little waterfall that I skipped over when we saw those. Those guys, we skipped that because they went straight to it. I want to swing back by that. Try the Ned rig over there because I've had fairly decent luck in that little spot. And then we're going to tie on that Chapo and give that a spin. There we go. Not a crazy one. We'll take it. We will take it. That's a frit side fish. Hey, he choked it too. No, it didn't. Barely got it. <laughs> I thought I saw it like barely hanging out of his mouth. Awesome, look at that one. Thank you, young sir. Thank you. Now go be a bass and go make a whole bunch of babies. A whole bunch of big babies. Don't overpopulate it, but like, you know, do your thing. Don't go too crazy though. All right, time's starting to kind of run out on us. So it seems like the evening, like this part of the evening is never long enough. Cause right when you start really catching them, that's when it starts to, you know, the sun starts to go down and then you kind of miss that bite window. There we go. Not a big one, but another one that makes what number five for us. Hey, that was a little bit better. Just a little bit right in the top of the lip. Awesome. Boom. That one's skinny. Cool. We'll take it. We'll take it. Well, not in our line. All right, kind of stayed right here for too long. We're just going to not fish our way back, hustle back, and see if we can't get a couple on top water. You know, a wee bit nipply. All right, I've never fished this side of that waterfall, so let's try that. Oh, there we go. Not the craziest one in the world. That's not the fish that we were even really looking for. But, oh my God. Dude, the thing is literally the size of the chopper. Okay, when I tell y'all to throw micro lures, like this is not what I mean. Like, I could put this bass on a hook and probably catch a fish on it. Dude, did you just hatch this year? Like, what did you think was gonna happen when you tried to eat that? Like, did you think you were gonna be successful or? Cause I'm just genuinely curious, like not trying to make fun of you. I just really would like to know, all right, you saw this thing come across your head and you were like, mm, I think I can eat that. All right, let's run it. Let's run it. Let's run it. It's your net rig. Now I'll tell you, there's a huge difference between this just medium bear toss tournament edition rod and like the medium bear toss rod. The medium bear toss rod is so much stiffer than this one is. Like this one would be a really good cranking rod. Like I kind of need to have the frit side on this rod and the Ned rig on the other one. I mean, this one is like fast tip. I'm not sure what the other one is, but this one right here is noise. We're going to pitch this little thing in here and see if there's just anything down there hanging out. Oh, I just saw one swim out from over here. Oh, there's one. There's a bass. Ha <laughs> ha! First cast, baby. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Got one on the Ned. And then also, there's no telling how many are down there. 
Cause like we were catching when we were catching those bluegill, when we were catching those bluegill out of the other one, I really feel like there was probably about a hundred of them down there. Cause every cast I would feel a couple bites on the way down. Boom, that's not a bad bass right there. See ya. There we go. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> oh no. Oh, don't go in that crack, dude. All right, can you make it down there by yourself? No, do you need help? I will assist you. Boom, that is fish number two, kind of fat. I'd say they're still kind of a little pre spawn The crazy thing is I still haven't seen a single bed. And I'm not sure if I'm just like late and have missed it completely and I'm like giving y'all misinformation <laughs> or what's going on. But like, I promise I have not seen a single, single bed anywhere. Like I haven't seen a fish on bed. I've seen a couple forming, but like out here, I haven't seen any light spots in the water. I haven't seen any fish just swimming shallow. And I feel like, I mean, it's April 17th. I always feel like I kind of do rush bed season every year. I feel like I rush it and I know it's kind of like in this time frame, but I don't know. It's just so weird. I think whenever I see the first pollen on the water and just in general, I always think that's bed season. Fish, there we go. Fish number three. Oh, he came off. Dang it. Well, that was another one. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Cannot be mad at that. Awesome. That's three right here. I wish there was some way I could mute this waterfall. Like, there's one. There we go. <laughs> that might be that same one right there. <laughs> All right, there has got to be a big one down there. There's got to be a bigger one. All right, we're gonna try to catch a couple more on this nader rig, and then we are going to switch spots and try to catch a couple on the Chapo. This is like a bass hack, <laughs> like this little nader rig down here. Look, there's another bite already. Let it go. There he is. Well. There we go. <laughs> he hit it two or three times and he like kind of pecked at it and I let my line go slack. I didn't feel him bite it, I just popped him. All right, we're gonna leave this bottle alone and try to catch one of that Chapo. Hey, come here. Ooh, ooh. Gotcha. Awesome. Little general, big mouth bass. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> I feel like I tricked that one. Like I felt him hit it twice and I was kind of zoned out, like thinking about trying to catch a, trying to catch one on top water up here. I was zoned out for a moment. <laughs> and like I felt him pop it twice or three times. <laughs> I don't, I don't even remember dude. I just knew I had to plan like subliminally going in my mind. Like I felt the two bites and I was like, huh, I just missed those. I felt the two bites. He's like, doo doo. Then on that third bite, I just set the hook. It was on slack line, but I knew like I kind of got his cadence. Like the first one came, then the second one came. And just, you know, it's just kind of being a fisherman, not trying to toot my own horn or anything. Chasing a bag, I'm racing the clock. Look at him flop, watching him flop. Used to see this on my sleep. When I ain't had shit on my thoughts in the car, I really was lost. Now I'm public with the soundscapes.